this is the macro discussion that a lot of people don't understand and they wake up in the morning and they open up their BTC USD chart and they do a bit of TA and they think, well, that Japanese candlestick, oh, look how long that wick is. And, oh, well, we didn't break the 7MA. You can't just look at that. There's just, there's so much more depth to making a decision. Um, that, and that's kind of what I, we want, I want to show people as well. Like, you need to take these, fun, these traditional markets into consideration as well. Um, let's ruin everyone's lives right now. <laughs> okay. And, and I, I'm on the same page as you. People need to understand, let, let's, you know, history, it, it doesn't repeat itself, but, it, you know, it's, what is it, past performance doesn't predict future, blah, blah, whatever. Yeah. Okay. So if we were to look at the dot-com crash uh, and, you know, those all-time highs of Amazon, people need to understand that S&P chart, it went into uh, accumulation for mm-hmm. eight years, correct? Yeah. Is that what is about to happen? I've said on numerous occasions on my live streams that I think there are a lot of parallels to uh, Amazon in the late 90s, early 2000s dot-com bubble. And uh, because that was the early days of the internet. And I'm drawing a lot of parallels with crypto. Um, Crypto savvy individuals don't really understand it because you live and breathe crypto. You're in it every day. You use a wallet. You use a DeFi application. You use this app, that app, and it's easy to you. But the, the sobering reality is we don't have users. We really don't. We do not have users. And our valuations don't really match the user set. So I think that uh, we do need some more time to make crypto easier. Um, Just setting up a wallet is a huge barrier. It's a huge barrier that a lot of people kind of want to ignore and not really give it um, the respect that it deserves. Uh, You go and tell somebody, hey, you you can't leave your money on an exchange. You need a wallet. They're like, okay, cool. What app do I download? Okay, cool. You, you download this app. And then they, they text you back or they send you a message or whatever. What is this 12 word thing? They're done. They're gone. It's so foreign, it, you know, and then you compound their, their lack of understanding by saying, yeah, you, you write those down. Well, can I just take a screenshot? No. Can I store it on the cloud? No. What do I have to do with it? You have to physically write it down and put it in a safe. What happens if I lose it? You lose all your money. Like <laughs> we're not there yet. Uh, crypto is not ready for mass adoption. In my opinion, I think that we're, we're still early days. Uh, you know, the positive that for those, the positive swing on that is for those who do know how to run a wallet, those who do know how to operate a, uh, a DeFi, interact with a DeFi application and know how to use a web three wallet, uh, 10 years down the road, you are selling that as a service. Honestly, like there's big business in the, in the skills that you have today. Because 95% of the users on the other side of the adoption curve will not have to do this at all. You have an incredible amount of skill if you, and again, you know, it doesn't seem like much, but it is. You have an incredible amount of skill if you know how to do these things and you will potentially one day be able to offer this as a service if it's not already automated through blockchain technology. Yeah, I think a lot of it, these applications will come out. It'll be more automated in that sense. Uh, um, but it, again, it needs to be built and, um, kind of going back to like, let's looking at like these Amazon stocks and, and, and it, again, it went through that in, on the Wyckoff theory through an accumulation phase for eight years. So m- my hope is that that doesn't happen. I really hope that I'm going to say best case scenario that we get, you know, the cycle continues in the next happening. Um, but I'm also prepared for the worst. Um, on your side, how are you preparing of what's going on now and, and looking into the future? Is it very similar? I'm hoping for the happening, but I'm ready for eight years. I, well, to go back to Amazon stock, it was about 10 years from the peak of the dot-com bubble until we made a new all-time high. And I think that's a very important distinction to make very clear because there was a mid-cycle rally inside of that where Amazon rallied 700%. So it's not like bull markets didn't exist anymore. It's just you didn't make a new all-time high for 10 years. And I think that the same thing can happen to crypto. And this is probably not what a lot of people want to hear, but going back to one of the other laws of Wyckoff, we have three laws. Um, 
law one is supply and demand. You have to have a market that has demand and you have to analyze the supply. Law number two is cause and effect. And cause and effect is referencing the longer you are in an accumulation phase, the higher the bull market will be. So although it sounds, you know, it's it's not what people want to hear that I think that potentially Bitcoin won't be back up at 70K for 10 years. And again, this is just a possibility. But for me, it's the possibility that I want because that is how you build the cause for a super cycle. That's how you get a hyperwave. You need to have that multi-year accumulation phase. If we get eight years of accumulation inside of Bitcoin, that's how Bitcoin comes off of its lows at 10K and ends up at $2.2 million per coin. Well, that's a bit crazy. But I, I mean, if, if you're talking at flipping like bond markets, essentially. I think that, you know, Bitcoin has an incredible amount of potential for how the internet runs, period. And uh, that number is based off of just what Amazon did. Look at Amazon in the, in the 90s uh, and look at Amazon today. Back then, it was an online bookstore. People were losing their... They were losing their minds over the idea of having a bookstore on, on the internet. And now Amazon, you know, hosts countless applications and basically owns most of the internet through its AWS um, services, um, Amazon Web Service. Um, it basically owns like everything. Uh, it's a huge, huge part of the internet. And I think that blockchain technology incentivized through the Bitcoin network um, will be a an equally monumentous part of the internet.